Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to give this presentation. <clears throat> After all of what we've just heard, um, to a certain extent, what I'm going to try and do is something completely different and uh, give you an idea of one of the challenges for um, providing health care for children with Down syndrome in South Africa. And I'm going to do it along the outline that I've uh, put up for you now here, looking at what our constitutional and legal framework is, looking at some of the major barriers to health care in the country. And, and when I present these, although I present each one as an individual problem, you've got to remember that this is all part of a whole system and that they actually will integrate and work together as a major barrier. Look at the consequences of this for um, people with Down syndrome and then give my conclusion and um, try and uh, suggest a way forward. And unlike what you've been hearing now, I'm not going to look at the teachers dying, nurses dying, affects education, health, people dying in huge numbers. It is really a really serious problem in our society. We've got five million people, probably more, living with HIV in the country, and it's, it's really causing problems. And of course, it has knock-on effects. After, you know, we always had TB, well now we've got TB and it's an awful lot worse. And we have multi drug resistant TB. So there are other issues. And it is so, it's the trying to, to, to care for people with HIV is soaking up our health dollars. It's really a major problem for planning and uh, implementing health services in our country. What it's done is it's reversed what we call the epidemiological transition. And I'll try and explain this very quickly. Back in 1900, every country in the world was a developing country. If you happen to see a film called The Gangs of New York, which was about New York in, in 1900, you would see that people were malnourished, they died from infectious diseases, violence, trauma, all the things that you would find in many middle and low income countries now. But then infrastructure improved, education improved, healthcare improved, all of these things improved. And so we managed to get rid of a lot of the health problems such as infectious disease, malnutrition, and then other problems came along like the, the, the chronic healthcare problems of middle life, diabetes, hypertension, stroke. So, and that's positive health care. You change the pattern of diseases as things improve. Well, you then get an HIV epidemic or war, civil strife, and all of a sudden you start going backwards. It's backwards because your, um, the facilities you have in your society uh, break down. That is a note in, some, in a patient's folder, and that up there reads normal baby. And that is a genetic trained nursing sister saying this isn't a normal baby, this is a baby with Down syndrome. So the doctor said it was a normal baby. That comes from a clinic, uh, from a, a small pri primary healthcare hospital way out in the northern part of our problem. And that's the genetic trained nursing sister who actually picked up that there was a problem. So in 1995 in Gauteng and Limpopo, that's where I was working, both in the rural, urban and peri-urban situation, we could only die, oh, we found that of a whole cohort of children under two that I looked at, only 16% were diagnosed when they were in hospital after they were born. But remember, being, the mother being in hospital after she had delivered was probably for an average of 8 to 12 hours and then she was out because there was pressure on beds. And you could be absolutely certain that her newborn wasn't examined and certainly wasn't examined by anybody that had any expertise. By six months, in fact, less than half of the children I saw had been diagnosed uh, with their Down syndrome. So in 2012, yesterday at the MIG, the people from Cape Town said that, well, no, 33% of the children that they were seeing had been diagnosed in that newborn stay in hospital. Well, in the friendly rivalry that we have between institutions, Cape Town might say that um, they're at least twice as good as we are at diagnosing Down syndrome in the newborn period, 
And I would say that they've done very well given that in 1995 the head of their neurodevelopmental pediatric program told me that Down syndrome was rare in black people. So they have come a little way. <laughs> and, and they've got a bit further than we have because we're still exactly where we are at 16%. So if we talk about care of Down syndrome and we can't actually diagnose the problem, the medical professions, the nursing professions can't diagnose the problems, then I'm afraid a mouse model really has no relevance. And that's, that's the sadness, how far behind we are. This is my laboratory, just some figures from my laboratory. We, we knew, we'd known that, uh, that, that, that we had problems with the clinical diagnosis of Down syndrome, so we just looked at the laboratory diagnosis. And in, our, in my laboratory, which is the biggest laboratory in the country, or was at that stage, only 54% of the uh, specimens sent in with a diagnosis of Down syndrome actually came up with a positive result. Now, there were two aspects to that. One was, because of barriers in terms of administration, the specimens were getting to my laboratory so slowly, even from just down the road, that the cells were dying, so I wasn't making a diagnosis. Or, the, um, the diagnosis um, was normal. It wasn't a child with Down syndrome. It might have had some other uh, congenital disorder, but it wasn't Down syndrome, so confirming the inability to make that diagnosis. The problem is exacerbated by the fact that in my laboratory, which has been halved at least in the last six years, so we just don't have the capacity to be able to offer cytogenetic diagnosis for people throughout the country. We've tried other ways of doing it, so we started using a test called QFPCR, which is DNA-based and therefore it doesn't matter if it's in the hot sun for two days before it gets to us, we can still make the diagnosis. The problem is there that the laboratory, which could do the work, has now been halved in size, so now it can't do the work. So we have major structural problems, and if you think South Africa's bad, just remember that most of the other countries in sub-Saharan Africa don't have a cytogenetic laboratory. So, we know there's a problem with diagnosis. Um, that's a major impediment to providing care for for children with Down syndrome. So what about treatment and counselling? Well, the strategic plan for women maternal, newborn and child health, which came out this year, 2012 to 2016, all 48 pages of it, and you can read what it says about children with disability. And this Congress is a start. We need advocacy, advocacy, more advocacy, and more advocacy. And in fact, what we need to do if the minister won't come to the mountain, let's put the mountain on the minister's desk so he can give it equal consideration with all his other health care mountains because people with Down's